My name is Bob and I work for Amco Pumps located here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And today I'm going to go through the disassembly and assembly of our CB Plus Brewery Pump. A little history behind this pump. Originally it started out as a food and dairy pump. We still sell a lot of them in the food and dairy industry. But that particular pump had an external seal which didn't tend to do very well when pumping hot wort. So we designed this pump with an internal seal that runs cooler than an external seal and does very well in the hot board applications. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the casing clamp. And to get this casing off, it's going to take a little bit of a, a tap from your hand to overcome the gasket casing seal. In the stub shaft, we have a 3 8 hole. And I'm going to put a 3 8 bolt in there. Hold the shaft. And then use my wrench to loosen the impeller nut. Now the impeller is spring loaded from the seal spring. So you want to push that back and remove the nut the rest of the way. Carefully take off the impeller. The spring from the seal. There's a gasket on the stub shaft. There's also a gasket on the impeller nut. And then there's a key in the shaft that you're going to want to remove. Set that aside. And at this point, on the back plate, there's two hooks that you want to turn the Back plate about 10, 15 degrees and carefully remove this from the adapter and stub shaft. Careful not to hit the seal on the stub shaft. So these are the seal components. It's what we call the rotating seal. It has an O-ring and then a protection washer. That washer protects the O-ring from the tab on the spring. So at this point, I'm going to talk about why these seals do fail. Um, inside the back plate is also what we call our stationary seal. And when the pump is running and pumping a product, there's a natural fluid film on these seal faces. This one's turning, this one's stationary. And if you're pumping something sticky like hot wort and you go through your run and you turn the pump off and you don't rinse it clean, that wort dries and builds up on the seal faces and eventually pushes them apart, causing leakage. So it's important, like a hot wort application, to rinse this pump to get those seal faces clean. So rinse the pump as the pump is running with hot water preferably or, or even a cold rinse water just to get those seal faces clean. The other way these seals fail is when you're pumping hot wort above 200 degrees Fahrenheit that tends to vaporize on the seal faces and causes them to run dry. So a dry running seal face will eventually wear and cause leakage. One way to alleviate that is to some of our customers will cascade water onto the seal area and that spills onto the floor and you're going to have to recapture that but that cools down that seal area and brings that temperature down so it doesn't vaporize the third way the third way we see seal failures is handling conditions both these seal faces are very brittle if you drop them they will chip or shatter or crack a cracked seal will not seal, a chip seal will not seal. So handling is an important issue with these two components. So the reassembly of the pump, got the stationary seal. One side has a notch. We always put this in smooth side up. Now what I'm gonna do is lubricate the O-ring with some food safe lubricant. 
press this into what we call the back plate. And this point, we're gonna wipe that seal face off. And we come here and we carefully, as I mentioned earlier, load this onto the shaft and the adapter and try not to bang that seal face against the shaft because again, it is very brittle. Now we're gonna put the O-ring in the rotating face. Again, add some lubrication, our protection washer, and our spring. We're gonna use the spring to help load it onto the shaft. Now at this point, sometimes that O-ring kind of pops out of its cavity. So we're gonna take two little screwdrivers and just make sure that's seated. If it's not seated, you will get leakage upon startup. I'm gonna take the gasset that goes on the stub shaft. I'm gonna put a dab a little food safe grease. Put that into its cavity. Now the key. And then the spring goes back in. There's a notch that corresponds to this tab. You want to get those lined up. The gasket, again, I dab a little food grade grease just to hold that gasket in. The impeller goes on, keyway lined up with the key. Push it in and overcome that spring. Make sure your gasket is in place. Now this nut has a torque value, but that's depending on the pump model and also the motor size, which is in our manual. Again, we come over here, we put our bolt into the stub shaft. And we will torque this nut to the proper value. Casing goes on. This is the only elastomer you don't lubricate. If you do that, you're gonna have a little trouble getting this on straight. Now make sure your port is parallel. Guess it goes on. I give it a little bit of a wrap with a hammer to get it seated. And then tighten the wing nut down finger tight. And then come back and make sure everything spins freely. There's no contact. And that completes my instructions.